What's up, guys? Welcome to Box of Box Football, and let's talk about the big clash of the day, day Jack. This felt like a like a big fight feel, you know. Mike Tyson, Fury's like like, like Fury's about to fight, but damn, Jack, what a game! Manchester City against Liverpool, and also according to Jamie Carragher, the greatest rivalry in Premier League history. We'll get into that debate later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like later on when they but Jack, what a match. The game finished 2-2. Manchester City are still a point ahead of Liverpool with seven games left. But Jack, let's just get into the game right now. What did you yeah. think of the, like of this game and what did you learn from it? I, I, I learned, and you and I joke about this all the time, I learned that I know nothing about football. Um, just to kind of, you know, peer behind the curtain a little bit here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, watching at home. James and I actually had a uh, preview video uh, recorded for, the, for this game that, that we were going to put out. But, you know, we, we just kind of, no, but we didn't, we just didn't have the time really to, to, to get it out. But if you'd have watched our preview video, you would have actually learned nothing about the game that you ended up watching. Um, <laughs> because again, you know, the, the, the common phrase that I always go to, especially with Pep Guardiola, he's playing chess, everybody else is playing checkers. First 10 minutes of the game, James, I couldn't believe it. Those three forward line, what you could even, uh, you couldn't even really call it that in a Pep Guardiola system, but those three forward line players that they've got were so narrow. They were so bunched. It was just like Trent and Robertson, you guys do whatever you want because we're not going to give Joel Matip and we're not going to give Virgil van Dijk and we're not going to give Fabinho time on the ball. We're not going to let them build from the middle. We will let them go out to the fullbacks, but we're not going to let them do that, which I thought was crazy. I thought it was crazy. It didn't say that way the whole game, but the first few minutes of the game, there was that kind of narrow press defensively for, for those middle guys, which I just thought was incredible. The early goal goes in. You're thinking, okay, maybe it's going to be City's day, right? But obviously, the fight back comes immediately. Then there's a response. Then the second half comes again, and Liverpool do exactly what they needed to do. James, selfishly, I'm happy this was the result. I like it being close. I do. I like there just being a point in it. I'm still back in City, like I said before. I still don't think Liverpool, I just think the difficulty of Liverpool's fixtures, there's enough trips there to trip them up. Now, do I feel so strongly about that to a point where I'm going to go, James, you're picking Liverpool. You're so crazy. I can't, like, of course not. This is Liverpool. This is Mo Salah. This is Jurgen Klopp. I think this is the closest title race we've had in a little while now. It feels like, um, you know, James, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm getting these kind of like feelings deep down. Are we going to get like a goal difference type thing happen here? Are we going to get a final day decider type? Are we going to get an Aguero hope moment? So, hope so, oh, hope too? so. I hope so too. I, I'm starting to get that feel for this. Um, but again, just again, not to go into too much detail. I love the game. I thought it was great. It wasn't what I expected it to be, although it was the result I predicted. And James, I think the, the my final point the craziest thing I thought, I watched a little bit of the Norwich Burnley game before. My God, are these teams so much better than those other teams? And I know that's not a hot take, but the difference in quality level between the game that we saw at the beginning of Super Sunday and the game that we finished with, a night and day, night and day. And we can talk about the Premier League being competitive and a difficult league to play in and stuff. These two teams are head and shoulder, even I'll throw even Chelsea in there. They're better than Chelsea, head and shoulders better than Chelsea, these two teams. Um, I think it's it, um, it's crazy. The first thing I want to do is give Jack credit because Jack did um, predict a draw in that video. He got it right. I said a Liverpool win because I just felt the mom like the momentum. But looking at the game, Jack, the first thing that got me was, it, was, was to me how Manchester City set up. All right. When right. we were talking, like when we were talking before about the game, we talked about how we may see Foden and Grealish out wide with Kevin with, with Kevin De Bruyne playing the false line or Riyad Mahrez Sterling. What way is um um is Pep Guardiola gonna do? Now the one thing that Guardiola gets criticized for is him overthinking and overthinking. And sometimes it could be a problem. It can it can also come to his detriment. But it's also to me a big strength when it comes to Pep Good Guardiola. Point. And Good we've point. seen that today. Yet he always keeps the opposition thinking. No one knew that Gabriel Jesus was gonna start. Jack he was he was the last player in your head. That like the like the, like believe that that the, like that like was gonna start and 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 also starting but in 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 the position he started he put Sterling as the striker 
in like how Jesus playing out wide when Sterling's which, a winger. Jesus, which he's done. Like, but Jesus has played wide before. To yeah, be yeah, fair, yeah, he, to be he, fair, yes, yes. He, he played. He played that against Chelsea. Right. Um, I also realized with it is that we didn't see much of Phil Foden. In, in, no. in, 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 in like to be fair to him, he did try to stop. Um, Trent playing. I get it. Trent did. Um, I'm thinking about it. Um, um, did uh, assist the goal, but Foden did sacrifice a bit of his play to also stop um, um, Trent. But the one thing I realized from Man City, especially, was that at wide, the amount of balls that were like Liverpool played this high line, and I hear this thing about Liverpool being a good defensive team. I don't think Liverpool are that great of a, of a defensive team. Man City had chance after chance after chance. Ball over the top, ball in behind, cross field, think, think about it, cross field passes. Like they really, really, really um, 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 spread the ball in the wide areas. And like especially from Jao Cancelo. Because I didn't see much runs being made from um, um, from Phil Foden. But I seen a, a lot of runs um, coming from in and out from Jao Cancelo in really yeah. trouble. Alexander Arnold, City gets the goal. Pep's pet pep, pep project. Uh, listen, is it like like he's definitely his pep guy. City certainly should have scored before that, but City get a bit of luck. They get the goal, deserved, and it looked like they were going to kick on. And Liverpool, they were on the ropes. But the difference between Liverpool and Man City is that Liverpool got killers, Jack. Liverpool, they need one chance and they will hurt you. And the fact right. of the matter is, Jack, Jack, in that first half, Liverpool didn't do much. But the one few times that um um they like they do go forward, they created a, a fantastic chance. Yeah, great, 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 great bit of understanding from Trent Alexander Arnold, Diego Jota. I don't know what this guy's on, but for somehow, some way, he finds a way to Jackie. I I, I don't rate Diego Jota like that, but he's a killer. He's he's no, a killer. I, let, like let me yeah. not lie, you know. But then again, fair play to Man City, the guy that we mentioned, Gabriel Jesus, making that run from um, um making that run from out like out wide. It's a goal. Manchester City two one ahead, and you're thinking they're gonna kick on in the, like in the second half because the game should have been out of sight. They had like they had enough chances. For some reason, the XG had Liverpool having a better expected goals than the, the Man City, which well, I which I didn't understand. But do you not, I felt like there were a bunch of times where there was somebody on the byline and there was a pull back, a pulled back cross, mm -hmm. like yeah, along yeah. the ground, not hard, mm -hmm. but just a pull back cross that for whatever reason was either intercepted or the shot was yeah. blocked or something like that. I felt like I, I saw that a lot during yeah. the game. The, the, um, there was one big one where I think there was a cross field ball, Rodri heads it down into John Stones and if it was a better header there, John Stones has a tap in. But the one thing I have to give Liverpool credit Jack is that that character that think about it that mentality because most teams crumble in that situation when Man City have a chokehold on you we've seen it with Arsenal Manchester United teams crumble but Liverpool yep. come back in the second half and Jack you literally blink and it's 2-1 you know it's transition from out wide for some weird reason Carl Walker gets caught on his side which literally never happens never happens right great goal <laughs> and right. for a good 20 15 to 20 minute spell Liverpool were on top in, in, in like fair play to them again they didn't create anything outstanding but they were able no. to take the ball and you know put Man City back a little bit but again Man City for me showing their quality and coming to the end of the game they probably should have won the game again Sterling's chance is it offside is it not offside Jack that that remind me of the Romel Lukaku offside in the like in the league cup it was just a carbon it, copy of that it's you know it's it's offside and and i think i maybe have a different opinion on offside to most other people to me it's a state you either are or you're not so even if it's you know it's, it's i know but Jack, but you can't where do you draw it. the line that's always my view where do you draw the line because i can agree with you how much of an advantage are you going to get by being a hair whip uh you know skinnier teeth amount or being on side you're not going to get any but where do you draw that line? That's the difficulty. That's the critical thinking, logistical, um, uh, uh, logical side of the uh, of the argument on that one. So, so I kind of am okay with that. And also, James, you know, that's what we're talking about before. Sorry, that's what we're talking about in the office on the Monday, if it's allowed. You know, yeah. so I'm happy that we got the quote unquote right decision. I still have some concerns about whether it should be your shoulder or not because i know it's with with parts of the body which you can score with yeah but i feel like especially if you're running through on goal it should be from your feet in my opinion so anyway sometimes that maybe like makes do. it too complicated i don't know but but again like man city 
started the game strong and, and ended the game strong and probably felt that they should have won the game. Again, Riyad Mahrez comes on, hits the post and Jack glitched the last kick of the game. Mahrez has a chance to, to me, end, like, end the title race. They don't take it. And Man City, to me, should feel more devastated than Liverpool. Like, Liverpool go right. in there and get a point. I think it's a better result for Liverpool based on the whole performance. I everything tend to agree is with you. Still, yes. Everything, to me, is still to play for at this moment of time. But with the way the fixtures are right now, I would just back Liverpool. And again, Jack, let's just say, and Jamie Carragher, to me, made this great point, is that let's just say Manchester, Liverpool look like they're going to go through, through in the Champions League. Let's just yes, say, for sure. shockingly, Man City go out in um in um in the Champions League, I will expect them definitely to kick on and win the title. I think so too. But a, a friend of mine even today made this point, and I wasn't really expecting this uh, to to react to this. If you actually have nothing to fight for and you're safe, there's a certain level of like you play without fear. So we talk about this kind of easier run in for Man City. If they're playing like a mid-table team who maybe won't make top four, sorry, top four, top, yeah, maybe top four, top top six, top eight, whatever, for the Conference League, won't get relegated. Last few games of the season are just kind of a free hit. You just kind of go for it. Because what's the worst thing that happens? You lose to Man City, big deal. So there's a certain level of, you know, playing without fear for some of these teams, which I think can go underestimated in into these matches. But I still stick to my original point that Merseyside derby is going to be huge. It's going to be huge. The Manchester United game is going to be huge. Oh, so I'm not sure, game. actually, Jack. I'm not sure about that Manchester United game being huge right now. Let's be honest, United. Actually. No, but I'm talking. No, they are. I agree with you. I'm. I'm totally. I'm so kind of done with them in terms of any sort of uh, uh, support or praise. I'm really over it with them. It's. Um, it's. It's actually kind of frustrating at this point. Spurs, though, as well. Again, these are all games where you're going to have a side who have a point to prove, maybe have something to play for, want to, you know, be the party pooper, let's call it, right? So I just think that that will, will, will aid Man City's fight here. I do expect City to still go through in the Champions League. And James, my final point, just before I just before I kind of forget it here, we've seen Liverpool since what it feels to me like the January transfer window, this has gone from being like a basically a one-man team or feeling like a one-man team in Mo Salah to... Yeah, I think Liverpool could potentially field a lineup without Mo Salah now, and they'd be just as threatening as they are now. And again, I know that that's probably gonna we're probably gonna go back to the well for the millionth time and call me a call me a Mo Salah hater here again. Oh, but again, yeah. Jurgen Klopp, this is the system that he plays. This is the this is the effect rate. You know, do I think Mo Salah is twenty thousand times better than a Diego Jota, Luis Diaz, Sadio Mane? I really don't. I really don't. That's why I think they're interchangeable. And that's why this Liverpool team, you know, going forward as well, that's why I have hope for them. I know we're talking about it. It's kind of, they're coming to the end of the line here a little bit. But James, these replacements are good replacements. And these yeah, guys, yeah. Whether, it's, whether it's one of them or whether it's all of them as a group, these guys can cover for Mo Salah's numbers if he's not there. Well, well Jack, right now they are. But again, Mo Salah did assist today. But guys, again, what a game. What a clash. Who do you guys have winning the title from here? Liverpool fans, Manchester City fans, comment down below. Guys, this is Box to Box Football. We're going to leave you now and we will see you guys next time. And also, like, share and subscribe. There it is. <laughs>